Now a division of the Johns Hopkins University, Peabody enrolls 700 degree students in music and about 2,000 non-credit students in music and dance. Our aim is to produce 21st century dancers who are technically proficient and have classical artistry, but also can manage a wide variety of non-traditional movement that's demanded for today's choreographers. Peabody, it doesn't have the fragility of, uh, of uh, an artist-driven focus. It is actually an academic institution of learning. Find her weight, find her, get it to a point where you feel like you're not doing anything to help her stay up. It had this curiosity of a historic line, of the evolution of styles, the collaborations of music and dance, and all these things that might have longer life than, than an individual, because dance is an extraordinarily ephemeral art form. It is there, and then it's not. Interest in Dalcro's Eurythmics, a teaching method promoting musicality through movement, was the catalyst for Peabody to formalize a dance division in 1914. Plastique was a forerunner of modern dance, and then we moved through the more traditional modern dance techniques like Graham technique. And lately, we've moved into more postmodern trends where yoga and martial arts and different types of approaches are integrated and we use improvisation and composition as part of the training program. Carol Lynn began in 1947 to develop a rich ballet program here at Peabody. Before it was a thing to do, she brought famous artists here to give master classes. It was unheard of back in the late 40s. I mean, you just, nobody did that. She brought Anthony Tudor, who was a very, very famous choreographer from England. It was an amazing, amazing time. She filmed everything here. She left me all of her films, and the films from Peabody I donated to the Peabody archives, so they're all here. Barbara Weisberger was brought in to tune up the ballet program, but little did we know it then that our visions were really similar. We've discovered that both of our disciplines contemporary dance and ballet are kind of interdependent. Today there is a great emphasis in ballet on technique. And we have fantastic technicians. They can do everything. They can do many turns. They can get their legs all the way up. Whatever you want, they can do. But they don't make you cry. Two-thirds of our enrollment are aged between three and seven. And that transition from the experiential approach to moving with little children is bridged into more formal, repetitive training. And we really want to keep that energy, the joy and love of dance, because technique taught in isolation doesn't bring the whole sense of dance as a theater art. So I want you to imagine that um, you're stepping out to an unknown space. Just follow the impulses of the music. What we're looking at is trying to show our students that they can also be very instrumental in the creative process of making dances, rather than just be instruments for somebody else. We have quite a core of alumni dancers who are either in well-respected professional training programs in New York or are actually already in companies. Stacy Martirana is part of the Cunningham Company and also is appearing with Mark Morris. And Pasha Knopp, who studied with us since he was four, is now in the JKO School of the American Ballet Theatre. 
I started dancing here when I was about four or five years old. I was really the only male dancer at Peabody for most of the time I was here. Since I always took class with girls, I think I have a certain appreciation for grace and elegance that other male dancers might not. In recent years, there's been a, a national deficit of male dancers. We decided to approach that need by opening a, a boys training program. Keep your leg going higher, because it's easier to hold your leg up here than it is down here. This has gone on now for about just over two years. We have 35 boys, and it's absolutely fantastic to have that male presence in our school. We really love it. Collaboration has really been a hallmark of my performing work here at Peabody. Carol tried to bring together uh, the musicians and the dancers in such a way that each of them sort of entered the world of the other. And it's very enriching to bring live instruments into the studio while we're rehearsing and I think it works both ways. We don't interact as often as we should. Everyone kind of is in their studio and they're sort of part of this world. Um, and to have this communal enterprise uh, come together was a very beautiful thing and a very inspiring thing. Peabody has unique approaches, adventurous ideas, I don't think there's any place else in this country that has such a lineage and historical interest of the development of dance in this country. We've spent a lot of time up in archives over the past year. We would open these archival boxes with all sorts of information about all of the incredible dance that went on throughout 10 decades here. And I am just overwhelmed by, by the volume of it all and by with the excellence, the uniqueness, and uh, the richness of our history. Mm -hmm.